Yo, what up, what up, what up, what up? Big love, I'm super fucking fired up that you guys finally get to watch this entire thing. Some of you seen clips, Daily V quotes on Instagram, but man, Nipsey Hussle, it, you know, when you talk about authenticity in the game, whether it's entrepreneurship, sports, music, teaching, parenting, uh, I'm always so respectful of it. It's so interesting to me. And, uh, and the admiration I have for the authenticity of Nipsey is incredible. We talk a lot about uh, the themes that you're seeing me play out about my belief in culture and hip hop and business. And uh, I hope you enjoy this uh, uh, clip, uh, this uh, incredible session, as I'll call it, uh, as much as I did in living it. Gary. Right, Gary. Nice to meet you. Man. Nice to meet you, man. How's it going? How are you doing? Yeah. Bino. Nice Bino, Bino, Gary. Good to meet you. What up, man? How, How are you doing, man? I'm all right. We're just vibing. We're just basically catching up doing what we're doing. So we'll just be ourselves. Yeah. What's up, bro? Gary. How you doing, man? Gary. Real good, man. Real good. Thanks for the hospitality. Yeah, absolutely. Nice to meet you, Selfie. Gary. Nice to meet you, sir. That's my engineer, Jay. Jay. Gary. Pleasure. Oh, you What's up, man? Gary. Nice. Real pleasure. Take it. Take it. What up, man? How are you, Gary? How are you? Never. How are you? I'm solid, man. Just, we just finished my album. So, you know, we just trying to stay creative while we get the marketing ready and all that. I don't want to stop being in the music vibe. I just want to keep recording up until the release date, you know? Stay in that zone. Yeah, just... I love that. I fell out before. Like, I got off music and started getting on, like, videos, marketing, thinking about selling the shit. Yeah. It's, like, painful getting back in the music mode, you know? So, I'm so like, while you're in it, you're going to stay in it. I'm uh -huh. making myself at home. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is this where you record? Well, we kind of bounce around. We built a spot in Burbank, and, um... We spent like a year and a half. It was like an open space. We built the walls out, built all the rooms acoustic from scratch, and we ended up losing the spot because we had a sublease. And we didn't know uh, we, we didn't know we had a sublease. Uh, we thought we was renting from the owner. Fuck. It was like that a, sucked, a, huh? I got whooped. I went to court. Damn. Paperwork. I never missed a rent. Everything was always on time. He was just like, bro, your name ain't on no shit. So since then, we just been like renting shit. We was at um, Paramount for like three months. Is that where you did most of the album? That's where we finished it. Mm -hmm. did, you started yeah. it back in that crypt yeah, spot. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want what you what you started with when I first walked in here about I got caught up in the marketing and all this for the music stuff. Do you just love like you know Boyd? Boyd's just like wait till you two meet. Right, like right. it just does it just just come natural to you? Just love it. What the marketing? Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, bro. Like I never looked at it as marketing until after the fact. I looked at it as like hustling like, and getting it done. <laughs> or just context for the release, right? Okay. Like all right, if it's I look at like albums. Or from like Jay Z right? mm -hmm. or Ti, or any big successful artist, some of their albums was really successful. Some of them was just like not really. And so the difference between the ones that were and the ones that weren't was the narrative, like the I'm about to go to jail album from Ti, mm -hmm. or the I just got this big movie ATL mm -hmm. and I'm calling my album King, and the song is in this. It was it was attached to a narrative. Mm -hmm. Jay Z, I watched American Gangster and I got inspired. I went to the studio. Whereas Kingdom Come, oh, I'm coming out of retirement. That was the story. Or, um. Why do you think this last one didn't pop that much? What, 444? Four, four? Mm -hmm. I think it did pop. I didn't Sales think, wise, they were saying, like, I mean, culturally, it felt like it popped. Yeah, I think that's like, the only success to me. I don't count the other metrics. I think that's the, that's the bar to me. Trading culture. That's it. If, yep. if it penetrates, you did it. A hundred percent. That's basically all I think about. I can't, Attention I'm, arbitrage, hack culture. Yeah. Other than that, everything else can be manipulated. All that shit can be influenced. That's right. If you go outside and you hear the music, you come to the concert, everybody singing the words. Then you're good. That, it, it connected. That shit been mm -hmm. true to me. But then also, you know, he did his shit through Tidal, through Sprint. Again, they did it as like a unique release just to... They vig the numbers that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he got a nice check. I don't know what they're doing. Well, you know, to your point, like, there's no way he sold all his shares to Sprint unless he was trading on fame and culture. Right. So we Sprint's a client of the company that Mike that Mike works for for me, like VaynerMedia. Right. Like, I know the CEO super well. Right. Like he's trading. Like fame is the ultimate arbitrage in our society. I agree. 
You know? It's the ultimate arbitrage. And like relevance and like conversation. And 100%. Inclusion, you know what I mean? To be included in something that is going to be consumed on that level. And uh, it's going to be respected on that level. It's not going to be like experienced as disposable. It's going to be damn near consumed as art. Uh-huh. And to be affiliated with that. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? And then understanding how to distribute it in the modern way. It's always going to change. I agree. You know, like when I think about Instagram and things of that nature, it's really no different than TRL. Right. You know, right. right? Like that. I mean, that's what Puff. I still don't. Even I was watching his documentary the other day. I was hoping they'd bring it up. They didn't. He hacked MTV at night. He would just show up on set and pull up, pull up, be like Carson. That's right. Because yeah. he was smart. He knew every single teenager's eyes were on that at 4 right. p.m. Everybody, right? It, people didn't understand what he was doing. He was acting all goofy. Did yeah, it? All he was time. doing. He getting a million something. A hundred percent. Back yeah. then, yeah. he fucking owned everybody who's fit. If you're what am I, 41? If you're 31 and, un- if you're 20 to 30, like you know exactly what that was. Mm. Yeah, I remember TRL, Carson Daly, the screaming crowd outside. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely- and he, like you know, that's when all the boy bands and, and, the, and the girls, and but he walked right in there and he started like hacking it. Yeah, right. That's what he's always, if you understand from Russell Simmons to whoever you want to talk about, everybody in hip hop who understands how to penetrate underpriced attention right. wins. Absolutely. Right, so for me right now, like, so if you're taking notes, the number one thing, YouTube vlogs, you get the right hook or a, your project. You remember uh, Madden when Good Charlotte was on Madden when you're like making your team in the beginning, yeah, right? And it literally that made them famous. Right. That's how I think about vlogs on YouTube. I think getting one of these 16 tracks on the right vlog that gets three, four, five, KC, Jake and Logan Paul, you get the right, like in a scene, right. that in itself is so much fucking underpriced attention. Yeah, absolutely. And so like that's how I think about you shit. Like you could be. On a similar, not to cut you off. No, please. 50's kind of doing that with, with power. Yeah. He's using power to like platform the music. 100%. Because I don't think he was getting it off without the TV show. No disrespect to 50 at all, but the TV show brought a new interest to his music. 100%, man. That, that's like, that's exactly right. Yeah. I was just with The Rock like an hour ago. That man just hacks every fucking platform. Yeah. Siri commercial, ballers on HBO, movies, social media. He's what's just up like, with The Rock, man. What's, what is he doing? He just he's trying crazy. to fucking. He's trying to win the world. Yeah. The Rock is like right. Yeah. He's just. You know what's crazy about The Rock is like everybody. Like I'm even looking at everybody's face. Like this crew, Upper East Side, 58 year old white guy. Everybody, like, everybody just smiles. Yeah. And that's fucking dope. You know, like that's just like. People what, fuck with it. He's hungry. What happened though? How did he go start going crazy? I just you know what? I was rock. talking to him. It's kind of it's honestly it's the same shit I feel. I'm sure you feel it too. Like sometimes you just know, and it's just a fucking. When people ask me about shit, all I do is ever point to my wrist. Right. Just a matter of time. Right. Period. Just a matter of time. Yeah, that's. I can even. I'm with you for four seconds. I can see in your face. Yeah. Once you just know. Yeah. No question. You just know. Shit. I feel like that. Right. That's real. That's right. You know what's in there somewhere. Like to me, like. I really popped on Twitter. I was one of the first people in the world to have a million followers on Twitter. Right. And then I got busy, did my thing, and like went to Instagram and all that. Like then I was quiet for a little bit. YouTube, you know. And then it was like just a matter of time. And then I got hot again. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you're good enough, right. shit's gonna work out. And that's how the and that's what the rock. Like if you ask me, it was the first time we really chopped it up. It was just like when he was like tried to play football, when he went to wrestling, like even when he was at wrestling, when he was the fucking rock, right. he still knew there was more. Right, no question. Do you think that that opportunity is something that everybody has access to or if it's innate? I think that every, today's world, mm-hmm. there's no more old white guy being the gatekeeper, so everybody's got an at-bat. I, agree. I just don't think everybody's got it like that. But I think everybody can maximize their shit. So like I, you know, not everybody's destined. No, listen, I love playing basketball. I'm not fucking LeBron. You know what I mean? Like so, I like we've all got our talents, but you know what you guys do for like. I mean, I'm looking at music and I'm spending a lot of time looking at it. Fucking SoundCloud, Spotify, putting music on vlogs. Like no more Jimmy Iovine fucking trips over you. No more fucking like you got. You're fucking one song away on like putting out shit like. And, and like, and you don't even need rap caviar. You just need to put out music and I think the one variable, the shit that I fucking trade on is trade culture. If you're hungry and like trying to think about your career, like you're 
it's so hungry right now where you're at, young and like, right? And what's going through your mind, same shit that went through my mind 30 times. You saying to yourself in your mind, this project, especially with this man, this project, oh, this is what it's gonna be. This is when it's gonna happen. And guess what? It might not. I just did Apple's first show, right? Will I Am, Jessica Alba, Gwyneth Paltrow, and me. Shark Tank for apps, right? And me and my team, DRock, will tell you, I'm like, this is gonna be it. They're gonna spend 20 million, I'm gonna be on every billboard, it's gonna fucking pop, it's gonna be the next Netflix. They won't call it Apple Music, they'll change it up before it comes out. They'll buy Netflix, it'll be big, did it? Nope, they put out Apple Music. Nobody here is fucking watching TV shows on Apple Music yet, it's not how we think. So, fucking 30 years I've been working my fucking face off, I'm like, this is gonna be the moment? And it wasn't. But when you know you've got it, you just go to the next thing, so I think, like for me, if I'm in music, I wish I could rap because I know I could be humongous because all I would do is make music and then lay in bed for 11 hours, try to hack on social media. Get in my shit, recognize, notice. You're one person away, one piece of content away. You just gotta fucking make it. And what's amazing about music, and I can't, sp- I think everybody, I don't like speaking about shit I don't know, so I don't wanna speak to it, but one thing I do know is I believe that every artist that ever lived had a lot more songs in their fucking dome than ever saw the day of life because of the way it worked, right? Now, everybody's fancy, everybody's trying to understand supply and demand. I don't think people understand how busy the world is. The world's so busy, there's so much shit that I'm a big fan of telling people to put out music. Put out music, like fucking every week. Like if you've got it like that, you know, some people don't have it, I don't know. But if you've got it like that, put it out, put it out. People are hungry for it. And every time you put out, that's giving you another at bat and it creates momentum too. Just by, it's like, it's like a fashion brand. They deliver in every season. 100%. You know, it's like a, a, a release schedule. Fan, but they but know. they gotta make this shit, they gotta distribute it, they gotta make that hat, they gotta make those kicks. It's slow. Like, fuck, from studio to fucking the world, right. it's just so crazy. I, I think there will be a big time artist in the next decade that puts out a song a day. I agree. Did a campaign last year called Marathon Monday. We dropped the song. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we, Some, I saw the reaction to that more so than dropping an album. I'm like, a hundred. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, somebody's gonna wake up and do something called 365, yeah. and they're gonna start on fucking January 1st, and they're gonna fucking go. See, who did a verse of that? Didn't Crooked Eye do a verse of that? I don't think he did a song. Um, uh, Emilio Rojas did like 30 songs for 30 days type shit. Right. But it wasn't. <laughs> Like somebody, somebody, somebody. I mean, you gotta really have fucking talent yeah. to drop 365 songs. Yeah. Discipline, hunger, you gotta have a t- Boyd. What's up? What up, my man? What's up, OG? How you feeling? How you doing, good? man? It's good to yes, see sir. you. Yes, sir. Likewise, likewise. <laughs> but if you, if you, if somebody, like, if you, like, pff, that'd be the first piece of advice from fucking Hove to fucking some kid right now who's never done. Of, you think you could? I mean, like, like I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, you would, you could, br- especially if you're talent. You know, somebody shitty puts out 300. <laughs> you put out 364 whack shit. You know, you put out 39 fucking bangers. You know, another hundred like fucking solid shit. Like you can have a throwaway here and there. The reason I love 365 is you can social commentate. Like what people love is relevance. Right, like I don't know. How, do you write or do you just go from the dome? I do both. I do right. Sure so both. for me, like, like just culture, right? Like, game seven of the NBA Finals. Like you slip a little. Like nobody can beat you to the market. Mm. You're just dropping shit that everybody gives a fuck about. Mm. Something pops on fucking Instagram and everyone's talking about. Just one little line. That's what hooks people. Right. That's what hooks it. You know. Current. Real current. I mean, yeah. it's just to have that discipline and to put yourself out there. Like. To put yourself out there like, yo, I'm gonna actually do this, that's hard. Yeah, it's a risk. It's, it's a risk, but like, the reward, I'm all yeah, about risk you know, reward, right? I did a sneaker, a like, all upside. The sneaker I got coming out, like, if it fails, like, nobody expects a 40 year old fucking entrepreneur to have a hot kick, right? But if it works, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I fucking had 2,000 people at Shoe Palace on Melrose Tuesday night. And the owner walked in, he's like, there's more people here than we dropped the Yeezys. Everybody heard that. That's right. And that's, that's it. That's what I keep doing, right? And the best part is you just have to have humility. If there were six people there, I'd be like, I lost. And that's just when you get to that place where you just don't give a fuck about what anybody else thinks. That's how you put out 365 music, right? 
right? Because that's Sunday, February 9th, you put out something okay and people are like, whack, whack, you should have done this project. That's when you get punched in the fucking mouth and are you gonna fucking drink that blood and just record the next day and fucking get them? Right. Or are you gonna fold like a cheap chair and be like, fuck me. Right. So you have to have the right DNA to go for those kind of projects. And that's what they end up respecting. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? Is that you executed. And then the, all the upside. You never, like, if on day 311, <laughs> right? Like, November, they're like, like, Thanksgiving dinner, like, like, is the hit, you know? Like, and what's crazy is it's a streaming game. So, back in the day, that probably would be against a model, but it's streaming. It's weird. Of course it was against a model. You had to make 12, you got to print the fucking CDs, you got to get it to fucking Walmart, Sam Goody. Like, it just didn't, it wasn't real. Right. Now, you know? It's just so different. Nobody's got control. It's you and the fucking kids that got it in their ear. I think the biggest thing, the biggest restriction is everybody thinking in the old mentality. 100%. Because there's a lot of money in the old mentality. Right. And like, you know, people are yeah, sad. People got rich in the uh, old mentality. Are you kidding? Will, Will, I was with Will, and he's just like, he said, music, and I, he was like, com- he was basically complaining about streaming. Mm. I was like, yo, I'm like, it's just not 1984 anymore, man. Like, like, sorry that you can't put out Thriller and buy a fucking amusement park, you know? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't understand why people complain about streaming. I get more off streaming, I do all sales. I'm sure everybody do. Money wise. I, I think the tip, I, look, truth is I don't know. I'm sure the tippy top of the sphere might have gotten, I don't know, I don't know. I think that the label, I think that what they complaining about is the label contract that's got them locked artists. up. Yeah, 100%. They don't have, a, yep. they don't have an the direct, yeah. Because this is a new uh, platform. How did your whole thing go down? How, when did when did you did you, you when did you first like hit the scene and then how about this? I mean, you were talking about him in 2009. That's about when. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. I, I remember. Like, I remember it was 09 because we just started Vayner, yeah. and I just remember your name. I was I, hustle is my favorite word on earth. So <laughs> I was like, whoever that is, I like him. That's <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. Charlie Walk told me that when we signed our contract, he like, bro, I don't even need to hear music. I'm signing you off your name. You know what's crazy? <laughs> all the heard the music, but he like, fuck that, we're gonna do the deal. We don't need to hear nothing. At the weekend, Republic is like killing shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Too. He's got that uh, Haley Seinfeld or whatever. Like, that, she was an actress and he signed yeah. her. It's like two or three other heavyweights. I yeah. forgot the name. Ariana Grande. Right. Grande, There's yeah. There's a lot of shit over there going viral. Um, but I mean, basically, like, why I'm so excited you guys are meeting is I don't think there's anyone in hip hop who could really change things like Nipsey can. And the other thing about it is I've seen you speak a couple times Mm -hmm. and then I've spoken to a few people in the tech world who like set up these speaking engagements or these conferences or you know Gary just speaks all or speaks all the time. Mm -hmm. When I saw him speak it was like I've heard a lot of people say the same type of stuff. I've never understood it until I heard him say it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like because of your firsthand experience and then because of your view, like your point of view and just the way you are able to communicate to people and just have people understand things. And then like the stuff you're doing with the clothing and then when you, I watched the video when you went into Starbucks and you uh, met the guy. Yeah, and uh, now he's like your CTO and like how many rappers have a CTO, right? But when he walked in Starbucks. um, Idris. Idris. Yeah, Idris was uh, the guy right there. Were just having a coffee and just sitting there? No, he was doing his work on the computer, but he's doing like this uh, AR stuff to like help, like when the cars are driving themselves. Like, he's a genius, like Basically, literally what, a genius. What is he explaining? He has some technology on a Starbucks table, and I had my daughter. I was just taking her to the bathroom, and it was like some shit I hadn't seen before. It was, it was like reading the the bone structure of his hand off of a LCD uh-huh. piece of hardware. So you, you know, just caught this in the corner of your eye? Well, I just walked past him and seen it, and I know enough about tech to know that that's not some shit that's out. So I just was like, bro, what is that? And then, you know. Got to talking. Like, yeah, we started talking here, young dude, you know what I'm saying? And he started explaining that it was um, autonomous driving. Uh-huh. It was designed for Uber. And, um, you know, he started telling me his story. How he was like President Obama's STEM um, uh-huh. specialist for the youth and how, you know, he was uh, offered a scholarship to MIT and turned it down. And has all these products <laughs> he's working on. And he's 18. I love that. And he come from the boy. Hood. And I'm like, yeah, we gotta sit down, bro. <laughs> and so we sat down. And where was this start? Right here, the Starbucks I just stopped by, or was, somewhere else? We was in, we was in LA. We was on Figueroa. Mm-hmm. And go ahead, I guess. I mean, basically, by us sitting down after that meeting, yeah. You know, he basically opened my mind up to how we can 
where we intersect as far as tech and as far as hip hop and culture and just like. Tech know. is the oxygen of our society. Right. I don't think people understand. Like, I'm sure you're gonna understand this. We're, everybody in this room, looking around, everyone's quite young. We're all gonna live in a mixed reality world. Contact lenses, where we're sitting here right now, fucking Pac and VR and is sitting right here with us. Like, right. people don't understand. Like, people think this is, like, people have no clue. They think shit's crazy now. We haven't even started. This is the fucking national anthem of a 19 inning game. Right. Like people haven't even wrapped their head around how fucked up shit is gonna be. Right, I agree. So you're hardcore AR, like machine learning, all like, is that like, yeah. AI. Are you doing, are you fucking around with blockchain yet? Yeah. You, you enjoying that? Yeah. You, you hacking on top of Ethereum yet? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet, like, but, not but it's caught your eye, right? Yeah, yeah cool. that shit's gonna be fucking. Do you have your laptop with you? And then they got some other crazy shit where it's like, you know, everyone's selling stuff online and they set it up where like when you go, so he has a store, like a successful store, physical store. And Fit, bricks and mortar. He has a real successful store and like when you pull the phone up and you pull it at the shirt, it starts playing at like an unreleased song. AR. So there's a reason you have to be in the store where everyone else is like, yeah, come to my store. It's a meet and greet. I might show up. It's like you actually have to go to his store to get something. Right. So like they're on like the- Where is that store? It's on Crenshaw and Slauson. We need to go there. Yeah. I want to see it. For sure. That's the corner, like, that's right, the main intersection in my neighborhood where I grew up at. That's the what was there when you were, what was in that spot <laughs> when you were a kid? It was a vacant lot. The whole time when you were a kid? Yeah, and we, we used to sell dope in that, in that uh -huh. you know what I mean? And we coined it as the world's first smart store, but it's basically like he was explaining, you know, there's like walls that are content walls, and mm -hmm. it has the big logo, the marathon logo. And when you go. Yeah, and there's a. There's so what, your app triggers it? Yeah, so the app is, I just, you know, encoded the app. And so basically, what you'll do, and even on the actual, like, say this was a, a marathon center. Yeah, of course. Be a oh, I know, I know this whole okay, world real yeah. well. So this is the marathon clothing app. It's still uh -huh. like, um, So then you'll click experience. Experience, and then once you point it, it fucking activates. Exactly. Yep. And what's really crazy is, you know, the next iPhone has the AR kit built into it naturally. Right. So you don't even have to download the app. Oh, so it's, it's, part of, it's part of the operating system. Augmented reality. Oh, right, right. So like, you know, on Snapchat, when you look at it and all the like cartoons pop up, the way it's all gonna play out, and you know what virtual reality is, right? right. The way it's probably gonna play out, I mean, I'm, I'm not fucking a futurist, but it looks like it is all of us 15 years from now, contact lenses, brain talks to it, and we switch from real life to completely being in a fucking virtual world or AR where all the stuff you see on Snapchat and Instagram, like, there's just fucking shit in here. Like, here's the butterfly. Right, right. Like, that's our life. Right. It really, you know what's really crazy about it is it's just straight up true. Yeah. Like, like it's not even like guessing. Yeah, no, it's, it's not, not even like, station. yeah, it's not Star Trek. It's like everybody here in 20 years. Bet, sure. banked, locked and loaded. What does that mean? What type of businesses are gonna be built around that? Well, what, what kind of businesses are gonna get disrupted, right? Like, right. if you actually think you're at the Eiffel Tower, by just closing your eyes, why go? Why go? Right. Right? So then you start thinking about shit like San Diego, right? Like where are the places where there's just nice weather and it's just chill? If everything's just kind of happening like that, like like how expensive is New York City rent? Like, like that's where you start debating shit like that, right? I think it's all about IP. I think everything is, all the pipes are dumb. What you fill it with right. is everything. So content. Content. Just what you said, I think, in, and even in my, Field of like hip hop, I think like when we look at Mickey or Disney, or we look at like Hello Kitty, these are oh, like, there's so much. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, it started, remember Bape the Baping Ape. Content. Like <laughs> when Bape was blowing up in like 08, 09, Mike and my brother and I, we had websites. We had something called Bape the Bathing Ape. <laughs> we were just trying like just like just like hacking because like cartoon scale. Like Vince cool. McMahon makes money on Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. Andre's been dead for fucking 20 years. Vince McMahon makes money. Right. You know? See, hip hop is the same to so 100%. I, I, I don't think that Snoop Dogg is any different than Mickey Mouse. I, I totally agree. You know, and he was content the same way Mickey Mouse was a cartoon and it turned into a world and turned into tangible products and it turned into things that can't be downloaded and can be sold, I think rap is in that point of view. I think that's why the Yeezys, I think Ye is doing that with Yeezys. A hundred percent. And you know, I feel like to me, I wanna be a part of that. I wanna be one of the ones that take a cash register for the music and shift it and use the music to bring the attention to it. The music is the leverage. Right. 
and right now people are, people have to make money. The, the basic players have to go on tour and make money that way because they're not deploying what you guys are doing and like you've got to scale and people are, they're renting, right? They're putting their name on something mm-hmm. but the company's making all the dollars but Puma is actually not that hard to replicate, right? The even even the next, e- yeah, even the next Yeezys is not gonna be done with conjunction with Wait, Adidas. Thank you, homie, please. Don't you know, like, see. because the infrastructure costs are just not that high. Right. Like when you start realizing it's a hell, the Kanye part's a hell of a lot harder than making this shit. Thank you. That's why I like big baller brand. I don't care what nobody say about the ugly ass shoe. I fuck with the, the, the model. I was on ESPN, Sports Nation, yes, two days ago. And they brought it, you know, they're like, what do you, you know, I want my big thing for the last 20, 10 years I've been put out on the internet, I'm buying the New York Jets. That's my thing. Talk to you. So they started with that. They asked me about Big Baller. I'm like, he's smart. I'm like, look, some of the stuff he pushes a little far, but like, don't get it confused. The essence of what he's doing is the exactly model. right. Yeah, just the model, not a design. The you know what's crazy? Cr- actually, let me take you somewhere that you're gonna like, based now that I know where your mind's at. Right. I'm gonna throw something at the, at the I, wanna, I wanna get everybody's reaction. I think the NBA is the craziest shit. I actually think the way the NBA is structured, that if tomorrow we woke up and heard that Steph Curry, LeBron, Durant, right? They left to start their 11, 12, let's call it 14 of them, Russ, right? If 14 of them were like, we're out, and now we each are the first 14 teams and our billionaire part, there's a lot of billionaires out there. And they're ready to roll. And they're ready to roll. Ready. So, so, like if I'm a billionaire and I take Russ and we're co-partners 50-50 because I'm putting up the money, we got to rent arenas, there's all that shit because teams own their arenas, but like. Start it off. Not the NFL, not baseball, not, but the NBA. If the top 14 guys left the league and started their own league, they'd break, they'd win. They've got the leverage. Mm-hmm. It's top heavy. Mm-hmm. We aren't going to fuck with a league where the best player is Porzingis. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and I love Zinger, and he's my future, my hope, and I hope he's the best. Right. But like, if you, if 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 the number one player left in the league is Paul George, the NBA is not going to beat the other league. So like, that's why I fuck with the, the lo, with the model, what the balls are doing. People don't understand as technology continues to per, like change, what? the leverage changes. And it's not malicious to me. It's like it's business. It's just it's it's the it's what the the moment demands. If you are aware. You have to go at it like that. Hundred percent. It's not like I'm trying to. I have it. And out. that's why I'm trying to push you and your young man here and everybody to debate this idea. If the world is in an issue of supply and demand, right. then why not have the thesis of just fucking pounding out? Cut. I have a man following me. What do you mean Ever. by that? What's the issue with supply and demand? There is so much supply of content that you can never be overexposed because everybody's getting pulled at so many directions. So the reason nobody wanted to put out so much music before, overexposure, mm. overexposure. That shit doesn't exist. Mm. There's nobody overexposed because everybody's getting pulled in so many directions. So like people just evolve to take in more info? They, that's for damn sure. Right. But even at scale, I think that you can't be overexposed as an artist if you're capable about putting out a song every day. Right. And that's where everyone's fucked up, they th- right? You know how it used to be, right? You come out, you do your thing, then you fucking disappear. Mm-hmm. Gotta keep that balance right. Mm-hmm. Come, right? Yeah. I think that shit's so competitive. There's so much great content. There's so much shit going on mm-hmm. that if you've got it like that, you gotta go. You gotta go. But you know, that's interesting because if you look at what made Future Pop like shift gears and what made like raw shift gears and like, what, what's up, Chef? What's up, what's up man? Tay, what up, bro? What up, bro? So this Chef, this Tay. Chef, Tay, Gary. What's up, bro? Sure. What's up, man? Real pleasure. How are you? Real pleasure. It was them pounding, just dropping music, bro. They went dropping they went music. music crazy. Look how much fucking music Drake puts out. Right. It's a lot of fucking music by standards of what we all grew up with. That's it. He's putting out more music in 24 months than people put out in their careers. I think the X factor is the quality. If you can manufacture. Well, this quality. comes down to talent. Right. 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 Like this is my thing with you. Like, like, you got to push the boundaries of how talented are you. Right. I agree with that. Right? Like how, just how talented are you? Right. There's always like, like, especially something as fucking culturally relevant and as passionate as art, you guys do art. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like, if you've got it in you to do it, then you do it. Yeah. Some people don't, some people got different processes, right? right? They gotta like, you can't force it. But if you've got it, yeah. it's an if your notebook is full, yeah. full, if it's full with bangers, you need to put that shit out. 
It can't be like Prince and you fucking, when we find him dead, we go in a safe and there's a hundred other great songs, you know? Right, right. That day doesn't exist anymore. I agree. Him and NJ didn't have it, like they couldn't do that. They had to wait every three years to put out 11 of them. Cause you're hacking yeah, distribution. Right, I didn't know that that's what you was doing. That's what you're doing. And you know what's crazy? Like my whole you know what's crazy? I apologize, okay. but I gotta say it. So, so my story is I grew up in Edison, New Jersey, good mixed culture. I'm 41, so I was there like, you know, I was rocking my Beastie Boy, all this. But then I went to Mount Ida College, which was a 90% African American college, right? And that's where I really got into it. That's when like, before the internet, like my friend Moose like was like, this is Scarface, you right. need to know this. I was like, what the fuck? You know, like, you know, like, and so it's funny. I am a super successful businessman. I got D's and F's my whole life. And I still to this day believe the people that most understand how to hack distribution are people that Hustlers. Co- period. 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 I think it comes natural to you because whether it's what's rolling in your mouth right now or whether it's a song, you're always hacking distribution. You know what I used to call it? Personality sales, product flaw. And yep. if, if, to me, when I used to go hand in hand and grind, I used to bootleg CDs. I used to sell a lot of other shit than drugs too. My CD I used to sell. And I used to have to distinguish myself in five seconds. So I used to be like, bro, this garbage thrown out the window. And that'll make him be like, let me see this shit. <laughs> you feel me? If it's trash, throw that shit out the window, right in front of me, I ain't tripping. Just listen, you feel me? And it's free, check it out. You know, if it's boo-boo, throw that shit out the window, bro. I, ain't, I don't got it, you know? Humility. And just, I'm, Humility is the fucking anchor. Right, and even just like. You know how to talk to your audience, though. And that's more important than the product. Because you reverse engineered the way you would have reacted. Exactly. 100%. And I think every time we have a release, when you was talking about marketing, if I love marketing, I think that you got to reverse engineer how you would explain it. How are you guys thinking about the fucking, the mutation of hip hop? Like, so that's what's real interesting to me. You got a lot of youngsters in this room, but for like the, the era that I grew up in, like there was one narrative, right? Like even if you weren't hard, you made up that you were. That's why so many guys lost, because they had to. There was no angles for, there was nobody dressing like you're dressing now. Like, when Bentley came out with those umbrellas, I was like, what? Like, now it's mutating, right? Like, now shit is getting so, it's great, because now it's the fabric of our culture. Like, to me, hip hop is the fabric of our culture. Like, America. What that means, it's mutating. So it really, it's, it's more fruitful for the real artists, the one that have humility, the one, like I'm waiting for like, who's the hip hop, like who's the guy or girl at the top of the game that embraces country music stars? Who's at the top of the game that like, you know like, there's so many hacks still left to be had. It's real interesting. It's real interesting to me. Like everything's just like mutating into each other. Like, like if you really look at hip hop, like it's crazy that hip hop absorbed like white nerd culture. Right? Like, you wouldn't be wearing those glasses 20, 15 years ago. No way, you'd fucking rather be blind as shit if you didn't have contacts. Like, it's really interesting if you really look at it. I think there's a lot of white space in that. A lot. You know what I'd love to see something like, you know what, what would blow my mind is if I heard you went to Chattanooga, Tennessee, set up shop and fucking did it there and like fucking brought in local. Like, there's a lot of hacks still left to be done right. in culture. Tech, tech uh-huh. are. Mm-hmm. Nashville and Chattanooga, like yeah. there's just shit to be done. There's real stuff James going. Yeah, yeah, Ron Gilmore's fucking. Yeah. He's done a good job. You're right. That's crazy. Yeah, like it's still frontiers. Un, 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 uh, like hasn't even started, yeah, right? Like just hasn't even started. I, I think I think a lot of people in hip hop, especially if you're born from it, you're in it. I think we're underestimating how much it is fundamentally the underlining current of our society. I mean, I think the jig is up. I think it's pretty clear. All the stats came out recently about streaming and about the biggest genre is hip hop. So that's that's not just your instinct, that's a fact now too. I think so too. I just don't think that people have really realized that like every politician, every tech developer, like every entrepreneur. realized it. They know. That's a hundred percent. They know. That's by the way, that I can guarantee you. They just hoping that, that the, I, the, the content creators don't feel like what you just said is the fact. Cats out of bag, man, that fucking it's fucking over. Like it's just a, now it's just matter of time. I agree. Matter of fucking time. What do you feel about direct to consumer as far as like not just music? In terms Everything? Of retail in terms of just business. So so that's all I'm doing. I'm building a machine. I have eight hundred employees, building a machine, 
to go direct to consumer, but I've got a little bit of a different bet. So instead of starting a new bottled water or starting a new deodorant, because I'm gonna buy businesses, I'm a big believer that nostalgia and IP is grossly underrated. So Marvel was a bankrupt comic book company, but when they took the business and they made it into movies, it was worth a trilly. Yeah. It was it was it was value flow. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like I think like so what's happening in the sneaker game? I'm fascinated how fucked Nike really is, because you can just see it. But I think if you watch carefully, everything's in play. Like I want to buy Keds. I want to buy Pony. All nostalgia. I want, I all nostalgia because right? Because once it meant something, sharp, it's worth a lot more money than people think. You mm-hmm. could start something tomorrow called Ends, but if you bought. Keds right. and rocked them properly and created distribution, it would speed up the process. That's exactly what's gonna happen. That's right. Yeah, I believe in that. So that that's really on my mind. Vans, I'm, you know, I'm just like now look. Basically, I walk through the airport and only looking at people's sneakers. Yeah. I'm not even looking at. I don't it's even see it. Right now, it, I don't buy the same shit I used to buy. Nope. That's it. The same taste I, used to I can't even believe ago. how much trouble Nike's in. I couldn't even think about think wearing something else. Of course they, they got arrogant. arrogant. Everybody gets arrogant. Yeah, cause that shit, you, I, say, I saw their designs go f- trash, bro. Trash, even Foot Locker, like, yeah. just the whole Foot Locker store turned trash. Mm-hmm. You used to go get fresh at Foot Locker. Mm-hmm. You used to go buy fresh shoes at Foot Locker. Yeah. That shit is garbage in there now. Yeah. Everything looked like, garbage. just like, they <laughs> 10 million copies of these two pair of Nikes. Right. Yeah. And they put them all over. The there. other thing is the cat's out of bag. Everybody, I'm looking at you right now, that champion, like, like, if Champion puts out a sneaker tomorrow and it's fly as fuck and they got the right influencer, the right hip hop star, the right cultural fucking person, yeah, it's nostalgia. in the game. Yeah, you, you 100% right? Point with yeah, people are wearing Champion like regular shit. I see it. Yeah. Like it's I see I it. Thought, you I know what it is to me? It's a clap. Look at Puff. 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 Look at Puff yeah. in his era with music, right? It was 20 years later and they sampled the 70s. 100%. Fashion, That's how it works. 20 years later, they, yeah, yeah. they sampled in the 90s right now. That's why all them brands is in. Puma. All in the 90s. You know, Starter's are, a 90 brand. 100%. Feel is a 90 brand. You know who's ready? Timbo Boots are ready to come back. Yeah. Right? We're doing you, a Timbo collab. Are you? Yeah. Timbo, that would be a business I would buy. That's if a big, you buy Timbo. That's a billion dollar company, by the way. They own sketches. I'm aware. They're huge. Yeah. But, but be, based on my thesis that hip hop rules the world, it's probably a $50 billion company on, if right you. Here. What's your thesis? Hip hop rules the world. Fucking with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how I really feel. I swear to God, if you hear an album, my album thesis is hip hop rule the world. All I gotta do is make a hundred percent authentic hip hop album. I'm global. I don't care what nobody tell me. I don't care what no person tells me on earth. All I gotta do is make the most one hundred percent authentic hip hop album right now. I'm global. While I got you guys here, let me throw something at you. Do you like traveling or no? I love traveling. Well, some people, you know, homebody. I gotta ask I gotta the questions. Daughter. I miss my kid when I travel. Okay, well that's so, why I'm asking. Yeah. One of the things that you guys should be thinking a lot about, seeing you guys film, marketing, you know, I've been paying attention, Boyd's been telling me stuff. What people don't, here's what I would do if I were you. Take some of the money you make in whatever you're doing, the store, music. You guys should pick four countries. Portugal, Brazil, pick four countries. Like, like top markets are like yeah, obscure you, countries. Honestly, you're so creative. I'm not, I was about, I'm not, normally I would be like, pick this, I'm gonna let it flow here. I wanna see what you're about to do. Right. Pick four markets, right? Because right? you might say my grandma's from the, I don't know, just like. I would definitely pick four. go to my country that my dad's from, that'd be on the list. Where's that? Eritrea, it's in East Africa. Love it. Yeah. Pick four countries with Facebook and Instagram ads, and I'm talking five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month mm. on four countries. You can, people don't realize how global the world's getting. People don't understand how inexpensive this is. Like, I went to Hong Kong, and by the third day, I'm like on a pedestal. Mm. America is still the number one brand in the world. Absolutely. America. Culture. Correct. Yeah. And so for you to just pick Indonesia mm-hmm. and fuck with it, run ads on all your little videos, play that music down, bang them, bang them, bang them, and then go there? What we was talking about? What we was talking about pulling up in London and all that? Like we just need to pull up and touch down and fuck around. Now London, it's noisy. Or, That's what, you see where I'm going? That's why I'm like, pick Portugal. Pick, I mean, your, your foot. No and you know how much Philippines so much. ads are? Three cents. <laughs> like you'll get everybody, like, and, and then all of a sudden, here's how it works, right? You do the Philippines, it kills. Now fucking Manny Pacquiao and you were, like, like, like right. you gotta hack, hack, hack attention, hack attention. Right. And like there's so much white space. Mm. What like, do you mean by white space? Un- meaning, un- that's correct. Right. Nobody, nobody owns Peru. 
And now somebody will be like, well, Peru, but you don't realize like, then like you, you go find some artist there and put them on heat. Like there's so much of that, right? What's that song, that fucking, the number one stream song now, like my daughter's singing all day, the fucking Bieber and the yeah, Latina. Yeah, like that's hacking culture. That guy was fucking hot down there, but not here. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. you know? That kind of stuff. And when you're like this creative and this entrepreneurial, that shit makes sense. Absolutely. Like that, you can reverse engineer or you can see what's actually, like there's just a, it's reverse Man, engineering. Crazy. They all coming on to the internet right now. Well that's it, everybody's, everything's mixing. Yeah. Everything's mixing. That's what I mean you know, with like crazy. white nerd. Like it's, like literally for somebody like 41 that watches culture every minute of his life, I cannot believe, cannot believe that like NWA like merged with Urkel. That's what happened. What you mean by that? I mean. Fucking, if you look at 1991, if you're oh, sitting, in terms of hip-hop. yeah, like 2017 hip hop is actually Urkel and fucking Ice Cube in 1992 having a baby. And nobody would have thought that. But like that's how, that what, you know, go ahead. I think that that's, that's in terms of where the world is. The world is at a transitional point. And the message and culture is so powerful that a destructive message at this point, I don't believe could exist. I think that Drake was needed on some love, balance the world. Cause I grew up to when Fifty Cent was the hot shit. He was shooting shit, bro. That's right. You know what I mean? I remember. It was it was gun culture and the music influenced the streets. Now everybody got a girlfriend and got tattoos and drink lane. You know what I'm saying? Because the culture was that influential, and I think that like the world is like transitioning. You familiar with like physics? I don't want to go way crazy. Go ahead. So they look in the space and see where they drawing their energy to see what type of civilization they they are. So if you're getting your energy from the the planets you live on, you're a type zero civilization. Okay. That's Earth. Yep. But we had a point of transition going to type one because we are getting into solar energy. We are harnessing the atmosphere's energy right now. So we are transitioning in terms of physics. When they explore space, they would say that uh, a civilization that harnesses energy from their atmosphere is type one. Understood. So we transition. Understood. And Mateo Kaku's theory, did not mind, this is what he said. I'm listening. Is that what's happening is that there's a technological evolution that's ahead of the compassion evolution or hmm. the, the spiritual evolution, which is the new age movement, the vegan movement, all these uh -huh. things trying to catch up to the technology. Because uh -huh. we got nuclear bombs and everybody's armed and we can commit planetary suicide. So what has to balance that is the culture. And that's why Drake is the biggest, right. I think. And the love is the movement and togetherness. Positivity is. always wins at the yeah. end, man. P this shit is so basic. Like, like when I look at what's going on in like the social realms, like positivity always, be negativity always wins the yeah. short game and positivity always wins the long game. Right. It's easier to be cynical up front and negative and people react to it. Like that's what you see on social, right? Ne all negative, negative, you know, like, People would rather clown on LeBron than praise Steph. It's negative, like short term, but long term, positivity always wins. Always. Human race just figures this shit out. I'm always on team human. Right. We could have been gone a long time ago. Right. I agree. Yeah, man. I think it's exciting right now though. You know, that's why I'm kind of going slow. As much as people are like trying to rush me, I'm going slow because I think that we ain't, there's no need to rush. I think all the opportunities are unfolding. So Snapchat is a wild, wild moment right now. Yeah. Cause every, you know how it is, people overreact in each direction. Everybody's like clowning on it cause the stock's not doing well and Instagram copied all its features. Meanwhile, $3 CPM and kids are watching content at scale like under 30. What it's does that mean? What is CPM mean? A cost per uh, thousand impressions. So you, you, you know, they're gonna spend ad dollars. Your okay. partner, right? So the three dollars per three dollars per thousand. It's nothing. Yeah. And more importantly, on Snapchat, you have depth, not just width. So this is in pre rolls on fucking ESPN.com that nobody gives a fuck about. Yeah. People are seeing your content in the middle, and then when they're engaging, it's at scale. So when you guys talk, and if I could be a help, if anybody here wants to follow up with detail, of course. Snapchat is grossly underpriced right now. Marketing. Uh huh. Grossly underpriced. And what is that? Because everybody's a headline reader, what right? Everyone's like, oh, Instagram killed Snapchat. Go open your app store right now. Tell me where Snapchat's ranked. What does a Snapchat <clears throat> ad look like? It's a five second clip or something? It can be, yeah. It's a what? 10 second in between, like you're kind of like clicking everybody's what? stories and then you'll pop. And then with you, like you should be like, yeah, like, oh, yeah, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? 
you, you should actually do exactly what the fuck you did when you were slinging your shit at the beginning and be like, yo, swipe up, listen, if you don't like it, fuck, that's it. You should fucking re-fucking do that same shit. You just look right in the camera and be like, yo, swipe up and listen to it, and if not, fuck it. (laughs) Right? That is super underpriced. That can hack. And everybody trades on, you know, everyone's headline reading. Oh, Instagram's winning. They're not looking at the details. Right. Yeah, they, they got a smug campaign on Snapchat right now. We got we got so much running on Snapchat right now because it's underpriced. Oh, I smear campaign. oh, who? Just the press. They uh, yeah, it. yeah. I mean, well, listen, they deserve it. They got punched in the fucking mouth. And they IPO ne- killed. I mean, yeah. but I'm buying now. Of course. Because it went too far the other way. Right. Right. Because because everybody here living like there's plenty of fucking people on Snapchat. Cal is still. Talking to his flowers every morning. We're <laughs> <laughs> oh, still man. in the mansion with the tin cone. <laughs> you know That's how I built my whole career. I answered every single person that engaged with me on Twitter hmm. from 2007 to 2011. All of them. Damn. 18 hours a day. Hmm. Every single person. Hmm. And so that one-on-one, it's depth. Everybody's worried about width. It's all about depth. Right, I agree with that 100%. And if you got the energy to grind, well then you can go wide and deep. Absolutely. I don't understand that all these artists have nobody give a fuck about them. They put out a post on Instagram, they have 11 people that give them love and they can't even reply to those people? Hmm. You got no fans. Yeah, Who the fuck you think you are? They got a celebrity complex. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what's stopping them. You know what the biggest thing I took away from the meeting with The Rock just now? Hmm. Dude, let's call it what it is. The Rock is one. He's yeah. at the... Yeah, for sure. Man's got 100 million fucking followers on Instagram. That man's still humble as shit, ready to put in work. Later. And he's there, and you got kids that record one song once in a studio once and think they're fancy. Right. It's crazy. That's the difference, though. Yeah. Some people fake think, it, some I people live it. Everybody wants something different from the game, too. Yeah, that's true. Rock want everything the game got to offer, clearly. 100%. You know? Yeah, 100%. Can I interject? You can do anything you want. uh, Responding to the Twitter followers for that amount of time, right? Going back and forth and going into 18 hours. How do you avoid losing those people after you scale up to a million or two million? Yeah, listen, everybody wants to be that person that found you first back in. You know, like everybody, people like when somebody makes it, they love you sold out, this and that. Truth is, if it's if you're true, if you're intense true, if you actually give a fuck about people and fans, you'll always win that macro game. You're always gonna have that small group that they get a high on discovering the next thing. Mm. They love being that person, right, in their group. And I think, I think that the original ones that you responded to, is gonna be so engaged that they're gonna be evangelists. They're gonna go out and, and campaign and, and, and create. And to, and to his and to your point and his point and two out of ten of them won't. Right, eight out of ten will which is better than zero out of 10, because you didn't engage. And the other two, they gotta find the next flavor of the month, because they love being that person. That's how they get their rocks yeah. off, right? Yeah. They're just like, ah, I discovered the next person. Yeah. I, you know, you know? I'm, I'm new on shit. Uh-huh. Right. That's what I always loved about you. You always had that ability to find new shit, but if you liked something, you liked it all, it wasn't, that wasn't the high. Can we hear a little song? Yeah, 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 I play the whole shit. Um, you want to see, you want to hear the record, the most recent records of me and Bino, or you want to hear the album? I'll fucking, I'm fucking happy I'm here. All right. So <laughs> okay, um, I'll let you wait, chop wait, it up wait. your way. Send me I really appreciate it. So I can blast off a yeah, I'll do it right now. I appreciate y'all. Yo, Bro, thank you. Good to see you man. And then also, when we do sit down, I just have so many dope concepts and just ideas. Listen, I'm like always traveling, always on. You got my number now. You what text me three sense? in the morning, you're like, what about this? I'm like, like I'm into it. No I want the action. No I want the action. Told you now. What was the biggest insight from this session? Leave it in the comments. Because of the, <laughs> the uniqueness of it, I will be reading every YouTube comment. Please drop them. Have a great life. See ya.